Hi, I'm Matt Slater from Cornwall Wildlife Trust and this little film is all about how to press and preserve seaweeds. Press seaweeds are absolutely beautiful things. It's a really great little hobby. It gives you a whole new aspect to rock pooling and diving if you collect seaweeds and press them. So I went out yesterday uh, on the shore and collected a few specimens of seaweeds and here they are. They're not particularly impressive ones because I didn't have a lot of time but I've got a few, a few species here and I'm going to show you how you end up getting a, a lovely pressed and preserved specimen. So step one, you need to actually float them in some water and I've got a little tray here. Now you're meant to use, normally I'd use a, a, a plastic tray, one of these white ones but I haven't got one of them with me today so I'm just going to use a, a little tray that I found in the kitchen and some ordinary tap water although sea water arguably is probably better tap water will do so take your piece of seaweed now you can arrange it a little bit in, actually that one's a bit big I'm going to go for a sort of a medium sized piece of seaweed and again I'm just going to arrange it in the water now you need some Paper. You need good quality paper. This is just some that I had in a sketchbook. Ideally, you need acid free paper. Okay, but you can get away with paper that doesn't say that on it as long as um, it's, it's pretty good quality. But if you want something to last for a very long time, acid free is the way to go. And what you do, for, oh, before you put the paper in, this is an important thing. Write the um, date. And time and the location. So this is Tan Beach, Newquay, 2nd of April. The reason you have to write that now is because when it gets wet, that, that's going to be no use at all. Now I'm just looking at this and I think, well, I'm hoping this is going to fit on the paper. But we're going to find out. Now you've got quite a lot of thickness there. So I've actually broken a few, I'll break a few more branches off this because if it's too thick it isn't going to properly press. Right and now you're ready so I'm going to put the paper into the water okay and just arrange that seaweed. Now the reason you float it in like that is, is so that you can actually arrange the branches as you like them using a paintbrush or similar. This is quite a nice easy seaweed to press, this is just a bit of sargassum. But if you're arranging a very delicate little red seaweed, for example, the brush is really useful for getting all the, brush, all of the, um, all the parts of the fronds nice and flat and in the position you want them. Then you just remove the paper and that is ready to be pressed. So I'm doing another pressing now with a, a selection of smaller bits of seaweed. To be honest, it wasn't a great haul down there yesterday. Now, because we've got some red seaweeds, I'm going to need my reading glasses for this. Because they're quite delicate little seaweeds. I have trouble nowadays focusing on them. Share my age. Okay, so now we're floating on some of these smaller bits of seaweed. And this gut weed is going everywhere, so I'm just going to rearrange that a bit better. And just brush out, tease out the fronds of this little uh, Irish moss so it's nice and flat on the page. Probably going to reduce down the gut weed a little bit. There we go. And that should be. ready to press as well. Now traditionally you would you would use a J cloth or some other sort of cloth or even a nappy liner that works very well. I happen to have some of these pads in the cupboard. These are these are puppy pads from when our dog was very young and they work really well. So um, I'm going to be using these but I would say actually a, ch a cheaper option the better option probably is nappy liners or J cloth. I tried paper towels once and that was rubbish. The paper towels just got stuck on the seaweeds. 
Anyway, so the idea is you lay that on top of your pressed seaweeds and that is going to uh, prevent the seaweeds from sticking onto the newspapers. So basically what you end up, what you need to do when you're pressing seaweeds is you need to find it somewhere in the house where they're not going to get disturbed. I don't actually use the kitchen table for this, I've got a little place at the top of the stairs where, where nobody goes. And I just lay down some newspaper, okay, and then I'm, I'm going to take the, the press seat, the seaweed to be pressed, put it inside the newspaper, being very careful with that liner. There you go, and that is ready to press. We're going to do another one on top. Now, when you first set up seaweed pressing, yeah, it, it seems quite complicated, but as you can see, it is really not complicated at all. You basically just cover the pressed seaweed. There you go, it's wrapped in the newspaper. Now, you're going to need something heavy to go on top of that. So I've got a whole load of books, some of these very heavy, that I'm going to cover my books with. By the way, this, this is a very good book, if you don't own it already, you should have a copy. Here you go, Keith, I thought you'd appreciate that. Okay, and that is basically what you do, you leave them like that. Every day I'll change the newspaper for the first sort of three days, and then after that I'll leave it for, and change it every sort of two or three days. After a couple of weeks, they'll be pretty well dehydrated. Here's some pressed seaweeds from a few weeks ago. And as you can see, that's Castle Beach um, in March. And they've, they've been pressed really nicely. That was only, uh, I think, three weeks ago. So, yeah, the system works pretty well. You know, you do need a good... You need to get something thin and porous to cover them. You can keep changing the... The newspapers and keep the weight on them and uh, it's as simple as that. If you want a good book for identifying seaweeds this one's the one we recommend Seaweeds of Britain and Ireland second edition by Sea Search and um, before we had this it was really hard to identify most of our seaweeds you needed scientific codes but you know with, with great photography uh, and this brilliant resource now you can identify most of the hundreds of species of seaweeds that we find in the UK. Thank you.